Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday, and welcome to another exciting episode of Brown Bagging It. I am Marty Jalove, one of three hosts, uh, and I want to bring out the other hosts in a moment. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about today's show. All right. Today's show is going to be all about uh, adding a little creativity to our leadership, to our directing. And so uh, I got the little flash there that I want to bring out our other guest right now, Christine. Come on out, Christine. Hello, Christine. <laughs> I'm out of your lunch bag. <laughs> all right. Yes. Before we get in there, I just want to remind everyone, normally you'd see CJ here, but he said there's something alarming going on right now, so he couldn't be here. <laughs> But don't worry, he's still behind the scenes, tickling the controls, so he's here in spirit. So, Christine, uh, let's jump into it. What's in your lunch bag today? You know, today I am hanging out in a little bit different space. I've got some key lime pie in oh, on my wow. lunch plate. I don't need a lunch bag today. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. I love the whole idea because you know how much I love pie. Uh, today is a treat, so dessert is appropriate. Uh, as you know, I always bring my lunch bag, and I've got two very special things. First off, uh, I've got some pudding, which is a week past the expiration date, which is the best time to eat pudding if you like film, okay? Uh, secondly, secondly, my wife told me that um, she was going to give me a special treat. She said she was going to give me two Brazilian brigadeiros. And I thought, wow, I told her, there's no way I could eat 10, let alone two Brazilian. All right. So for those of you who are not familiar, brigadeiros are a very special treat from Brazil. Absolutely delicious. Again, another treat, which is the only way to describe our guest. A real, real treat. <laughs> Christine, <laughs> are you excited I, I don't about today's show? I, I'm excited about the Brigadero. I'm still lost on that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you'll, you'll understand eventually. Right. So, Christine, the whole idea of today's show is about adding creativity into our uh, our directing and our leadership. And we want to get right. the guest out right away. Uh, but I wanted to drive home this idea that in today's society, today's uh, day and age, uh, our employees, our followers, our people, are being pulled in so many de de different directions. The rules of leadership have changed and we have to really get creative. Wouldn't you agree with that, Christine? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I think that there is a parallel to be drawn here from being a director on a stage yes. and bringing out the best in the people on the stage and the props and everything that's going on. And also when we're leading and communicating and try and also, you know, sh shining a light and bringing out the best of everybody and the things around us. Excellent, Christine, perfect, perfect introduction. Our guest today is Mario, uh, Mariano, sorry, Mariano DeMarco, uh, a director, uh, a, a, a writer, uh, just on everything. He is just a joy to talk to. He has taught at Columbia College as well as Second City, uh, the Improv Comedy School. He teaches comedic film. Uh, just a, dream, uh, a wonderful person to meet. And I could go on and on, but I'd rather, uh, let's listen to him. We're tired of listening to me. Hello, Mariano. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Christine. You two are cracking me up. <laughs> and I'm really, really, really hungry. <laughs> and so you're a big uh, 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 dessert eater, huh? Uh, I have a sweet tooth, yes. All right, beautiful. <laughs> One of the other things that I love about you, Mariano, the first time I met you, you are always wearing these beautiful flashy shirts. So what oh. I've done was look at this. I have worn a different <laughs> shirt, a better shirt oh, in, in honor of you. You surprised me. I love it. That's I, I am breaking the trend. I am normally in a black shirt, but just for you, Mariano, we're going off. We are going off script completely. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's do it, baby. Let's let it rip. Right. That's awesome. I love that, Marty. <laughs> So I, I'm not taking my shirt off for a different one. Else, <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Somebody Beautiful. needs to, you know, maintain the balance here. There you go. There you go. So Mariano, tell us a little bit about leadership or directing, how you find you have to add creativity. Oh gosh. It's so essential, Marty. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world. I think between, um, a strong leader and a leader who doesn't rise to their full potential. Um, 
when I think of, of, of leadership, of course, in terms of directing, uh, uh, it's, it's very important to uh, think about a couple of different things. And, and, and this okay. is from my experience working uh, in film and theater and with actors, and, but primarily you know, in the classroom when I'm working with students at either film school in terms of uh, either how to work on a set or how to work with actors or how to collaborate. Uh, there are a couple of different things that I think are really, really important. First of all, I think a good leader has to have vision. They need to know what they want to achieve. They need to have certain goals. They need to have incremental goals that can lead up to a larger goal. Some people call it product. Some people call it content, whatever you want to call it. But they need to have vision. Uh, and that is whether they are a, uh, the, the sole leader of this endeavor or whether it's part of a more collaborative art form, um, it's important for a leader to have vision. Beautiful. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, along with that, though, I think a, a, a good leader needs to have good communication skills. Uh, along yeah. with, right? Along with having the vision, they have to have the ability to express their vision to whoever they're working with in order for, first of all, for everyone to be on the same page, but also to inspire. Uh, a leader uh, has to inspire those uh, who they want to follow. Otherwise, sure. um, you, you, might, you may fall short. Um, so I, I think uh, communication and, 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 and taking the time to choose your words carefully and to okay. express yourself, super important. Also, I One think more. Another, <laughs> okay. feel free to interrupt me anytime. Um, no, another, you're on a roll. I love it. <laughs> uh, another thing that a good leader, uh, I think, uh, should have is to uh, be open to the idea of collaboration. Uh, we at the Second City Film School are huge on collaboration. That's a very important part of uh, how we approach filmmaking. It's also a huge part of the Second City, the idea of improv and the yes and motto, yes. as well as creating from abundance uh, a mottos. Um, but I've used that at Columbia College as well. But collaboration can make an enormous difference in the effectiveness of leadership. First of all, I think anyone who's working on a project with a leader uh, wants to hear their, their voice heard as well. Um, I think that collaboration allows for different ideas, different voices, different perspectives, different points of view to come into that development period sure. where you're getting ideas off the ground, you're starting to plant the seeds for what eventually will be a project, a film, a, a theater project, whatever. Um, so um, the collaboration can be huge. It can be enormous. Yes. Um, and so many new ideas come from that. Um, let me, sometimes let me, let me build on something. Let me build on something you're collaboration. Is that right? Yeah. Have I got it so far? What Say that, that again. I didn't hear you. Vision, communication, and collaboration. Huge. Yes, Huge. yes. So let, me, let, me ask, let me ask you something. In leadership, and, and maybe more so on the stage, uh, or but it uh, definitely applies to business, is sure. egos get in the way. All right? Maybe. Some team members can. Can, can. tend to get in the way. So as a director, how do you create a, an atmosphere where the egos don't affect the outcome in a negative way? That's a really, really good question. Uh, a, you take psychology classes. <laughs> I mean, not literally, although it could be beneficial. But, but uh, you know, a director is many things. They're, they're, they're a parental figure. They are a, 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 a bouncing off board. Uh, sure. they, they are, uh, uh, but they are also... Um, psychologists because you're dirt you're working with a lot of different personalities and it 
it behooves the director, in my opinion, to hopefully, if there is the time available, hopefully to get to know the people you're working with because you well, may have multiple personalities and and with with multiple personalities, as we know from our own lives, there are different ways that we communicate with them. There are ways that we know they will hear us and there are ways that we may know that they will not hear us. So right. it's a balancing, it's a real balancing act of um, how to communicate with people differently. So in terms of egos, uh, sure, there, there can be egos uh, in any environment, any creative right. environment or other. I think by listening, by taking the time to listen, I think egos feel like they're heard. However, I think it's important at some point, probably early on in any form of collaboration, to establish the sense that there is ultimately some hierarchy, some, some, uh, you know, some process of, yes, we collaborate, yes, we discuss, yes, we work things out together, yes, we find new ideas together, but ultimately, uh, I or the director or whoever is in charge is the one who makes the final decision uh, about about all things uh, considered, and and that's tough because um, it's extremely you, tough. Yeah, you're not going to always make people happy, but right. if you are respected, if you have expressed that vision, if you have expressed yeah. that passion and if you have expressed that purpose that you have in whatever it is you're doing my hope is and i think in a lot of cases people are going to respect your final right. decision because they respect you or they trust you they trust you that's another so that thing be my question is you said about expressing the vision so it sounds like you're the type of director that shares the full vision at the beginning Do, have Always. you ever used an experience where you dole it out little by little or is it you found in your experience it's beneficial to put it all out there at once i that's a really good question christine um you know it sort of depends on the situation for example if i'm in the classroom i will dole it out slowly there's a sort of momentum that you're building uh, from week to week or class to class, and ultimately you get to some kind of uh, moment where everything has fallen into place. Hopefully, now if you're doing a, if you're doing a film or if you're doing a, a, a theater piece, a play, um, depending on how much interaction you have with not only cast but with crew as well. It depends. You might have individual meetings with actors. You may have individual meetings with um, the behind the scenes uh, artists uh, where you can dole it out slowly. But ultimately there is that first day, uh, whether it's a, a read through of the play or whether it's a table reading of the script, if you're lucky enough to have that, or the first day of shooting where you do maybe a kind of pep talk to welcome everyone for the first time where strangers are literally meeting each other and asked to work together, to collaborate together for X period of time. So again, it depends on the situation, but at some point, yes, early on, some kind of vision, some kind of purpose, as well as the passion that should come through with that in the best situations is, is really important, yeah. You know, and that's a cool tool is to bring the read through of a play over to a business. Um, Definitely, I, I do like that idea very much. That's interesting. Well, yes, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm not an expert on the business world, but um, my guess is that businesses have business plans. They have yes. corporate meetings right. and things like it that. Would be right. It would be nice to really open up that vision, do kind of a read through of what the business hopes to get out of the year, the 10 years, etc. All right, sure. We're going to cut you off because CJ keeps flashing these things going, OK, you know, this is so exciting. I, I could listen to you talk all day, uh, Mariano. But right now we're going to take a small break and then we will be right back with Mariano. So here's a little comedic break for us. So it was between two shows. The usher was walking up and down the aisle, checking the seats. 
and he sees this guy laying down across three seats. The usher looks at him and says, Oh, excuse me, sir. You can't uh, lay down here in the theater. You can't take up three seats. It's only one seat per person. The guy laying there looks at him and goes, Ugh. The usher goes, Oh, oh, well, sir, if you don't get up, I'm going to have to get the manager. And again, the guy just looks at him and goes, Ugh. So the usher runs off, gets the manager. The manager comes back. All right, what's the problem here? Buddy, you can't lay in the, in the theater like this. It's only one seat per person. The guy looks at the manager and goes, Ah. The manager goes, All right, I'm going to go get a cop. A couple minutes later, he returns with the cop. And the cop's like, All righty, boy. What's going on here? Ah. Uh, what's your name, son? And the guy laying down says, Sam. Where are you from, Sam? The balcony. Oh. <laughs> still, still my favorite comedian. I love that guy. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Good, because it's supposed to be funny. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> it's always good to check in where somebody's from. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where are you from, Mariano? <laughs> Where are you from? Where am I from? I was born in Argentina. Um, okay. I came to the U.S. with my parents in uh, in the mid '60s, and I grew up in Northern California, and uh, went to school there, and then moved to Chicago in '82. But the Midwest has been my home ever since. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like a Midwestern. Yeah. What was the inspiration uh, growing up? Like, what was your inspiration to get into a film? Well, or cinema or acting. Yeah. Go ahead. It's a long story, but I'll, I'll make it brief. Um, my grandparents in Argentina were uh, part of uh, early theater, uh, which was then uh, connected to vaudeville in Argentina, and they used to travel around the provinces. And my mother, uh, grew up in the theater, uh, and she went on to become an actress. So there was a lot of um, theater influence in my life from a very, very early age. And I got into it in high school and, and did it in college, and eventually after college went to an acting school. But um, eventually I drifted from acting. I wasn't working uh, as much as I wanted. I couldn't support myself. And I, 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 I left creativity for about eight or nine years. And one day, uh, I, 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 not one day, but I was starting to feel very uh, creatively empty inside, you know, a, a very sort of sad, dark place because I didn't have creativity in my life. And that led to therapy <laughs> and it led to, <laughs> and it led to identifying my true dreams and goals. And that was going you. to, yeah, it, it led to going to uh, applying to Columbia College, uh, uh, Chicago's uh, master's program in film. And Wonderful. I went through the program. Yeah, and that's how I made, I reinvented myself. I reinvented nice. myself in yeah. film yeah, and in academia. So so, um, so you gotta you gotta kind of view your therapist as one of your mentors too, that showed you how oh, uh, learning more how to direct people, right? Oh, 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 without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, she was instrumental. I remember one day I was in her office and we were talking about, oh, I'm so nervous to, to do this. She said, see that phone, go pick it up. And I did, and I called Columbia College and I asked them to send me a catalog. It was a really scary thing to do. Wow, wow. Um, but yeah, but, but, but she was instrumental in that. Oh, absolutely. Look, thank goodness for our mentors. Um, yes. I'm lucky to have had many throughout my life. And um, what a difference that makes in anyone's life and, 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 and development. I, so you find I yourself Go ahead, film. Christine, sorry. Well, you Go find ahead. yourself in film now. Yeah. You, and you talked about being in high school theater. And I think that's a pivotal point for many people. I think there's many adults that look back and say, I wish I was in theater or yeah. the high school theater were my years. Yeah. How, how did high school theater play out for you? Was that a good space? Did you get the roles you want? What advice would you give to people who didn't get the roles they wanted? 
Well, um, it played out well for me. I, I, I had a lot of opportunities to uh, be in some good shows and to play some fun roles. Uh, and that made a huge difference in my life. Um, and I have actually a, a little story that I think is important uh, for anyone uh, in high school uh, digging theater and thinking about continuing. When I was getting ready to graduate, uh, I remember going to visit my high school counselor. And I said to him, uh, well, he said, what, what do you want to do? And I said, oh, gosh, I want to go to a college and, and study theater and I want to be an actor. And he goes, oh, no, 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 <laughs> you'll never, you'll never make a living out of that. He said, no, no, you have to do something else. And unfortunately, I listened to him. Oh. And I wish I hadn't because um, he sort of dampened my dream. And I think anyone in high school who is into theater should, and if it's pas if you're passionate about it, go for it. See what happens. Right. Look, as long as you go in wide open, knowing that it's a very, very, very tough field to succeed in and to make a living out of, you're only 16, 17, 18. You, the, the sky's the limit. The world is your oyster. Don't give up on your dreams. I, Make, I, you know, find that out for yourself. Don't let somebody else tell you. Exactly. I think for me, when I was in high school, I did all the behind the scenes stage work, that type of thing. Yeah. I was, yeah. I failed on the stage. Uh, oh, and what I finally really believe. Oh, well, no, it was a complete stage fright. What I finally realized later in life was it's okay to fail. Once I fell oh, yeah. on my face and realized I'm still okay, oh, uh, it, it, it absolutely helped me over some of that fear. I've learned more from the mistakes I've made in my life than yes. from the things that worked out well. I mean, you got to fall on your tush exactly. every now and then. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of wish I was falling on my tush. I was falling on my face. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what that emoji is all about. There Christine, you go. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Christine, were you uh, in high school in the theater group? Oh, no. No, I wasn't. I was the kid who stayed away from theater. Like, I felt like I wasn't. Um, talented enough to be in that okay. space but i was lucky because i have kids that embrace the theater and love it so Good. as an adult i was able to get involved in like behind the scene things right. that met my theater call <laughs> that's a huge thing to to i think uh, accentuate too um, whether you're a theater kid or whatever kind of kid you are in, in, a, in a creative sense or anything that, 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 uh, that you're into, parental uh, 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 acceptance and encouragement is yes. huge from parents, from friends, from the rest of your family to be encouraged to try things, to take risks, to go for it, to trust mm -hmm. your instincts when it comes to creativity or something you just love to do. It's, it's very important so that you can have new experiences and figure out your own path. Yeah, or, I, I think, go ahead. I was gonna say, what about this is to, for people that are considering anything, quit waiting for an invitation. Oh, I, yes. And I think this is true in the theater world more, oh, yes. is if you really want to get up front and stuff, you need to advocate for yourself. You yes. do, absolutely. In fact, that was a huge mistake that I made when I finished my, uh, my master's program at Columbia. I don't know who the heck I thought I was, but I thought, you know, people were going to come knocking at my door. It's like, we want you to direct this. It's like, no, that was incredibly naive of me. You've got to put yourself out there. You know, and it's harder for some people to do that. Some people are a little timid. Some people are a little sure. more private. Um, but for any profession, it's, a, it, it, it's something that you learn and you get better at doing, but you kind of got to self-promote you got to put yourself out there make yourself available or put yourself in situations right. where you're even going to be uncomfortable but try it because it's like it's like anything you just get better the more you the more you do it 
Perfect, perfect. And perfect segment. We are going to take another break for our le- our youth leadership moment, who is a young lady uh, in the theater. And you are just going to love her personality, her uh, just the excitement in her voice. And, uh, you know, again, let's watch the uh, video and we'll talk about it in a moment. Play it. Hi, everyone. I want to introduce you to my new friend, Nevaeh. Nevaeh is a student director at the local high school, and I could go on and on about her, but I would rather her introduce herself. So, Nevaeh, who are you? (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm Nevaeh, and um, I am a person who is extremely involved in theater and have done it for a very long time, and I'm 17 years old and a junior in high school. Nice, nice. I like how modest you are. I've done theater in a long time. There's more to that. You've done, uh, you've done, now you're doing directing, but you act, you dance, you sing, right? So tell us a little bit about singing and dancing. So I've sung for a long time, but I've done voice lessons since sixth grade and I've danced since second grade. Wow. So you're really into it. So you have a passion. If you had to choose one or the other, dance or singing, what would it be? Singing, probably. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. So this is this new play you're directing. Incredible. What's the name of the play and what's it about? The play is called Puffs and it's a parody of Harry Potter. Um, It's a super fun show all about the Hufflepuffs and the positivity and the difference between um, the normal show and the side of it. Nice, nice. Okay. So how many different plays or musicals have you been in? Oh, more than 20. Really? I didn't (laughs) Wow. I'm thinking you're going to say five. More than 20. Nice. So what was your favorite play that you were in? My favorite play I've been in is Cinderella. Okay, and of course you took you were in the lead. Yes, I was oh, Cinderella. Right, right. <laughs> okay, that was uh, why was that your favorite? Um, I was super close with everyone in the cast, and okay. I just loved the show and the music and the dancing and just being involved. That's perfect. That's perfect. You were also in a play not too long ago, go called Squirrel Girl, right? Yes. So a completely different type of play, uh, Squirrel Girl to Cinderella, right? Mm-hmm. And you were also crutchy right so in another play yes all right so you you are like all over the place (laughs) so tell me a little bit about squirrel girl so squirrel girl has been one of my favorites by far just because it was my first high school show my first high school lead and um there's something about that character that i could really relate to and her positivity and how she just wanted to be there and help others um all right so what are you looking forward to in directing let's go back to that Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to just um, having relationships with everyone in the cast and okay. being able to try something new. Nice, nice. Now, you are a junior, so it has got to be tough because there's a few people older than you, right? Yeah. So how are you going to handle that? What do you, you know, where, where, do you see, foresee any problems? Honestly, I'm really close with the cast already, so I don't see any problems. But if I could choose one, it's just because I have to make sure that they feel like they're just as important. Too. Excellent. Yes, yeah, definitely. And so what about like freshmen who are coming in that they've never done a high school play? How are you going to make them feel? So I want them to feel just as welcomed as just like anyone else in the show. And okay. I want it to be a positive environment so they feel like they could come back. That's that's cool. All right, so directing, uh, we talked a little bit before, and you were talking about in the future, you don't know exactly what you are what you want to do. But I wanted to ask you, what was what's if you could be in a play or, an, or in a musical in the future, what would it be? Anastasia. <laughs> All, right. All right, what about the character Anastasia or the play, the musical that you really love? Tell me. So for the character, I definitely say she's just this brave and confident person and okay. her songs are amazing and beautiful and just the entire show everything about it is so well done excellent excellent so i'm going to ask you the tough question is that anastasia you're on the main stage let's say you're in broadway okay and you get the choice you either have to direct it uh choreograph it or star in it uh which one are you going to go with mm, that's a really tough <laughs> one but i definitely say star in it really really yeah. all right it's got to be tough to come off the stage to be the star of a stage and then go behind the scenes and direct, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, but you're still doing this. So um, do you still have that same nervous energy? Definitely. I mean, there are some big differences between that. 
but I'd say I can be just as nervous because I feel like there's so much that I still have to do and take account of. Okay, all right. Uh, and so talk to me about where you learn this from because you can't just jump in and become a teacher. All right. Um, I absolutely found this this young girl just adorable in her, yeah. her excitement in life. She is just yeah. finding everything that she does on the stage and behind the scenes just like the greatest thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of her energy, Mariano? I loved it. I loved it. She's a triple threat. She's like a quadruple threat. I mean, she, yes. she sings, she directs, she acts, she dances. She's amazing. She's incredibly eloquent. My goodness. And, and you, can, you can feel the passion and the sincerity in everything that she's talking about. That's wonderful. I, I, I really, I, 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 she, she's going places. Uh, yes. uh, I, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, it's wonderful. It, 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 she, she talked about uh, positivity. Positivity is incredibly important, extremely right. difficult to maintain in life, in the world, you know, uh, with yes. so many challenges. But the fact that she has found some way of maintaining that positivity is really exciting and you know right. that 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 shines on other people and that affects other people so when she was talking about dealing with the younger members of the troop the older members of the troop a she was talking about vision which i think is really good yes and she was also exuding that sense of positivity to to make everyone feel comfortable in a shared purpose uh right. it was, she's great Gosh, right. I wish you all the success in the world. Excellent. You know what? Um, I love talking to these young kids and and feeling that energy and that positivity. Because you sit here going, she's a junior in high school and she already right. seems to have all the answers. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, one of the coolest things is her name, Nevaeh, yeah. spelled backwards is heaven, which oh, is such oh, the, oh, the oh, most appropriate oh, name for this young lady. Oh, okay. I didn't Just even realize that. Absolutely that so amazing. Oh, wow. Yes. So what we're going to do is, you notice how the interview kind of tapered off, it kind of disappeared? Because what I want to do for her is after her play, her first directorial debut, after that, I want to have her come back and we're going to yeah. finish the interview so I can hear what she, you know, what we talked about what she's planning to do, but I want to hear what she actually experienced and what she did. That's great. So Marty, yes. Very exciting. Can you clarify, did she have a role in the play or is she just a director? Is she, she is the just director? a director. Just Holy the director. director. Of this yeah, so that's yeah. that's got to be. That's why I said it's so tough to say. I I love starring in it. I love dancing. I love singing. Right. But today, right. this play, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to watch the rest of you become stars. Right. So right. Try this right. Absolutely wonderful girl. Yes. And you know what? Yeah. I think that's what makes those high school plays so valuable for all of us to go visit. Even though it might have been a show that you've seen before, something Puffs is not a real. I, I've seen personally and professionally done, but sure. I know several high schools are actually doing puffs in the area and it's rich to see the different takes on it. And it's super yeah. rich. Let's see student directors. That's and the beauty of creativity. That is the beauty of bringing one's personal vision into an interpretation of a work of art. Um, we could all tell the story about how we learned how to ride a bicycle, and there would yes. be three different stories here. They're familiar stories, but they're unique in their own way. And she'll do the same thing, interpreting the show and and making it unique and universal. I mean, that's so exciting. Very, very much so. So uh, we're going to be wrapping up soon after our book deep dive. Uh, Mariano, uh, thank you so much for being part of the show. This this show is going to be a treasure. I'm going to watch this show multiple times to pick up on all those nuances that you shared with us today. So thank, thank you, you again so much. Uh, thank you. Any, I really any, enjoyed any, my any closing thank thoughts you, for us, Mariano? For having me. Yes, be well. All right. <laughs> thank you again so much. Uh, Christine, Christine. Uh, any any thoughts on Mariano? I love listening to this guy. I love talking to this guy. He is just uh, a joyous guy. That's why I had to wear the special shirt just for him. Yeah, honestly, from the very first picture I saw of Mariano and him on screen, there is a lot of energy oh my God, yes. <laughs> that is yes. coming through. Wow, I would love to be one of the people who gets to learn from him or that he's directing. I bet that's a really 
powerful and um, bonding experience. He's, he's not just a director, he's a leader for sure. Without a doubt. And, and it's too bad we didn't get to really discuss too much about Second City with him, where he is filming the Second City Film School, which has been going on for a while. It just changed its name. It was the Harold Ramis Film School. Now it's the Second City Film School. And he is known by many people, and I'm sorry to the rest of you instructors, but he is known by many people as being one of the favorite teachers there at that school. So uh, it's been we've been very lucky to have him. All right, did you see CJ's little prompt for us? We have got yeah. to get to our next very special part, and that is Christine's Deep Dive. Christine, take it away. You want to All right, introduce? Boredom Slayer. Okay, Boredom Slayer, here it comes. This is the second time we're reviewing in this book by Rich Mulholland. And we'll let CJ roll. Awesome. Would you like four easy steps, a boilerplate, perfect outline for writing the perfect speech every time? Last week in the deep dive book review, we talked about Rich Mulholland's elevator pitch to liner. And this week, I'm going to talk about these four easy steps to writing a perfect speech. To be a great presenter, it starts with writing a great speech. You have to put good stuff in to get good stuff out. Well, Rich Mulholland's Boredom Slayer gives us four steps. Step number one is give them a reason to care. The next step is give them a reason to believe, followed by tell them what they need to know, and finally, tell them what they need to do. In step one, give them a reason to care. This is all about creating that itch in the audience so that they are waiting to scratch it. It's been said, if you take horses to water, if they're not thirsty, they're not going to drink. And so this is all about creating a desire, an itch, a want, for your audience to continue to listen to your speech. This is not our why as presenters or leaders, but the why of the audience is the key here. Once you have them hungry and waiting to hear the answer, then you must tell that give them a reason to believe. A lot of times we hear this in the beginning of the speeches, but let's it's a it's probably the most painful step, you know, you don't want to be talking about the boring stuff about what makes you credible and all of that. But it is necessary so that your audience is going to believe in what you're delivering. So the next step of tell them, give them a reason to believe is either define your credibility as a presenter, define your credibility as a leader, or define the credibility of the, the facts of what you're presenting, that this might be the opportunity to present it there. Next, you want to tell your audience what they need to know, no more than what they need to know, and from their perspective. So the example here would be um, driving around in my neighborhood or in my city, it's not very important for me to know how those traffic lights got put up or the laws around them or anything. I really just want to know if there's a long light somewhere, there's construction that I need to be aware of. When I tell my audience what they need to know, I'm telling them from their perspective what they need to know. So if you're presenting a large strategy or a change in your company, you may want to segment divide your audience up so that you can also target them to telling them the part that they need to know rather than giving them more. In fact, if you're really looking to give a great speech, you wanna cut out as much as you can, really go through with a fine tooth comb, take out all of the extra stuff and just give your audience exactly what they need to know. In the final step, and this is really what we're doing when we're delivering a message or leading a group, 
is telling the audience what they need to do. This was one key point that I took away is that any given presentation is not going to be a right flank into action or moving directly into what we want. It's just small change. It's about getting a little bit of change and momentum going. Really, you just want to get your audience to take one small step. For example, if you can get them to go to look at a website or if you can get them to sign up for something, but all of the change is not going to happen usually as a result from just one speech. You want to get the ball rolling to get some momentum. So when you tell them what they need to do, give them the single easy action item so that they are doing something. Give your audience a reason to care give them a reason to believe, tell them what they need to know and tell them what they need to do. When you write your speech, answering and filling in this outline, then you're sure to deliver content that will create the action that you want. See you next week. Awesome yeah, book dive there. <laughs> I love that. I've I'm, I'm writing, I'm feverishly writing notes down about this book. Um, I've, I, I love your book, your deep dives, because it saves me the time. I don't have to read the book. I just, I just have to listen to Christine's audio version. Fantastic. Oh, I don't know if I, I, the authors want to know that. Um, I would say Boredom <laughs> Slayer is, actually the great thing about Boredom Slayer is it really could be a weekend read. It's a relatively small book. Okay. He's got it packed with content. If you watch sure. Rich Mulholland for his YouTubes, he's got a lot of energy and that comes across in his writing. <laughs> awesome. Well, so, you, know, you, know how much, you know how much I love books, Christine. So if you suggest it, I'm going to get the book. All right. I love it. And the fact that it's a short read that I'll, I'll do it, I'll binge it and finish it up. So fantastic. I'm loving it. Uh, so, Christine, it was a perfect way to kind of uh, complement everything we were talking about, because here we are talking about being creative in directing or being creative in leadership. But we also have to step back and say, wait a second, don't get too creative and forget our vision. Like Mariano said, mm -hmm. our vision. Uh, don't don't get too creative that we we forget what we're it's all about. And so with uh, Dragon Slayer, his breakdown and some of the tips we got from our our guest today. I think we've just created some incredible leaders out there. What yeah, I think we also have to check in with people to see where they come from, right? Hopefully they're not yeah. from the balcony. There you, go. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So um, I think that's it. I think uh, Mariano uh, gave me so much to chew on. It's been an incredible lunch uh, day today. And uh, I've got nothing to add to them other than, uh, like I said, I'm going to rewatch this video. And if I've got questions, I've got the in. I can contact the guy. <laughs> what about you, Christine? Any closing words for us? Or do you want to just yell out a goodbye? <laughs> Yeah, just an absolute um, thank you to Mariana for coming on the show. I mean, he's a director in film, but there's a lot of parallels that we can learn from what he was sharing there. And I think what we didn't talk about that definitely came through is he is not bridling the energy that he has. He's just a really positive presence. And we felt that with our student guests as well. So I would say great lessons for us all around. Let's get creative and let's do some yeah. you know creative stuff in leadership and Christine, I want to add one more thing to what you had said about us being uh, parents or uh, leaders in general we uh, have to encourage our kids to get into theater to do this kind of stuff because it's no longer a an opportunity it's an obligation I think they have to learn to become uh, to get over that fear, that stage fright. They have to learn to be able to reach into their hearts and pull out that those emotions those ideas and put them out there to the world. And so uh, high school theater, uh, places like the Second City Film School, awesome, Columbia College, awesome places for um, all of our kids and our, our people to grow. So thank you again, Mariano. Christine, as always, thank you. CJ, I know you're hiding back there in the shadows somewhere, so thank you so much. We will see you next week, CJ. See you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Christine. <laughs>